Well, I would like to first of all thank you, um, thank you, um, the, the, the uh, vice chancellors and the deans and the colleagues at the Far Western University for the invitation, and um, which gives me an opportunity to talk about um, um, this um, paper um, on language learner agency as a pedagogical focus for language teachers. Um, this paper, this presentation is based on a position paper I contributed to um, with a group of colleagues, including um, Professor um, Diana Larson Freeman, Professor Sarah Mercer, and Dr. Paul Drive um, to Oxford University Press. So uh, that's why I use the Oxford University Pride, uh, Press, the standard um, PowerPoint slide here. Um, if you're interested in, in the paper, which is called Learner Agency Maximizing um, uh, Potential, um, uh, you can download um, well the paper um, here. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to talk about I'm trying to present an argument that why we should consider learner agency as a pedagogical focus. I will explain what learner agency is, and I also uh, will be talking about uh, um, the kind of teacher's role in uh, promoting learner agency, and then um, some sort of consideration we need to uh, undertake um, in relation to ecology of learner agency when we talk about promoting learner agency. Of course, I will conclude with a few messages, but I think um, they are important for us. And the reason why we need to think um, learn agency as a pedagogical focus is because I know um, language learners have to deal or respond to challenges uh, within and beyond the classroom. If I think, uh, first, uh, for instance, we can think about the uh, pandemic, for, uh, which has significantly changed the landscape of language learning and teaching. Um, um, language learners have to respond to so many challenges in um, in this, um, say, during lockdown and online learning and teaching. And um, when we talk about challenges, we also talk about opportunity as well, uh, because and challenges could be a great opportunity for us to learn new things. That's why um, it's very important for us to um, prepare um, our language learners uh, for the challenges and so they can convert uh, these challenges, learning opportunities within and beyond the classroom. And we always need to negotiate complex contextual process and to create enabling conditions um, uh, so that we can pursue what we like to pursue. And, and this is very important for our language learners as well in, in today's increasingly uncertain, challenging world. Um, as educators or as teachers, I, I, I believe that we are also committed in helping language learners to, max, uh, to make a difference in their lives. We just, we're not just teaching them language, we're also trying to grow persons. We are, uh, we're trying to grow our language learner into the kind of persons with kind of resources that they uh, need uh, for, for the challenges beyond the language classroom. And we also uh, need to help them to maximize their potential and become um, lifelong learners because we know that uh, what we can um, teach them within the classrooms uh, is extremely limited and, and they need to um, learn to adapt new situations um, in the future beyond the classroom. That's why uh, we need to think about um, the development of agentic language learners as an educational goal or as educational focus. Uh, we, um, we need to think about learners as subjects who can act rather um objects who are acted upon so how um does this um in this quote in um well does this kind of idea um influence the way we teach we approach the uh, teaching of language learners and sarah mercer has also um uh, said a learners need to believe that, that they can make a difference to their learning have we tried to make sure that, that learners um are, are aware and they um, who are help them to um, uh, strand their belief in what they can do to their learning and in life beyond the classroom. And that's uh, my favorite quote, and I strongly believe in that. Um, um, Donna, uh, Professor Donald Larson Freeman says that uh, language teachers should who promote learner agency recognize that, that they do not only teach language, but they also teach learners. That's um, the kind of a idea of a growing uh, person in, in language classroom instead of just focusing on teaching um, grammar and vocabulary in language teaching. So what is learner agency? Um, well, there are a variety of ways to um, conceptualize or theorize agency. It's a very complicated 
um, uh, con uh, concept, and I think there are many ways of uh, theorizing agency in, in, in different fields of inquiry, including philosophies or social sciences, um, uh, but to um, sort of operationalize it for language teachers here, uh, we define agency as kind of feeling of ownership or sense of a control over learning. And um, this could to do with the kind of a um, behavior, that's kind of strategies that uh, students can use uh, in um, managing their learning. And that um, the, fee the feeling of ownership and sense of control might also to do with their beliefs and attitude towards learning or whether they're aware of um, their capacity to do um, um, this sort of thing to manage their uh, or self-regulate their learning. And uh, of course, then, um, then the uh, notion of agency is also closely related to cognitive process. And it's also to do with uh, emotional process that language learners uh, will go through in the process of language learning. Um, so if we talk about agentic language learners, we are probably talking, uh, talking about those learners who can take initiative and, um, and they can uh, not only follow the what teacher says in classroom, but they can also initiate, take initiative in um, uh, organizing uh, learning opportunities for themselves. And they can also seize and create a learning opportunities and they're willing to take risks and um, uh, endure uncertainties. And if they um, fail, they're still confident in what they can do and they're quite resilient um, despite the failures or setbacks they may experience. They can adapt and they can perceive, uh, persevere in challenging con conditions. And they are willing to learn that they have a growth, a growth mindset um, constantly um, um, taking up new learning opportunities um, uh, um, and taking up new ideas and, and, and for, uh, for growth. So this is kind of an agentic learners we um, have in our mind. And this is for course, something that we would like to uh, see at the end of uh, our pedagogical efforts um, in, in our classrooms. Um, I think that um, the speak, previous speaker uh, talks about uh, my, one of my research interests is to do with learner autonomy. So I needed somehow um, uh, to explain uh, the, or discuss the differences of connection between agency and its related um, but distinct concepts. And one of the um, most um, uh, related um, concepts is learner autonomy, because um, um, I think um, People always um, associate agency um, together with um, these concepts like learn autonomy and um, or um, people with um, other concepts like self-direct learning or uh, self-advocacy or self-regular learning or self-access and self-learning. Um, um, these uh, concepts have been um, examined in research in relation to uh, so-called uh, learn autonomy research a lot. Um, if we try to uh, differentiate the two concepts, um, I would argue, um, but these concepts are closely related to each other, but um, um, the differences if I would uh, like to highlight is to do with the fact that agency is probably the root and the other concepts are all the expression of agency. So um, they are close related and, and agency is the root and the um, concepts like autonomy or self-direct learning um, uh, to do with the kind of expressions of agency. That's, let's put it that in a simple way. Um, if I have to compare agency uh, with autonomy, then I would highlight the fact that agency is multidimensional. It's to do with interpersonal, um, so within the person, but also to do with kind of environmental aspects where interpersonal, so we do is the kind of a social, uh, surroundings or different uh, interactions that the individual may have with uh, people in a, in a given context, uh, while autonomy could be seen as something um, very individual. Um, that's why we argue that agency relates to a socially connected learner, a language learner within social context in, in constant rec uh, interaction uh, with um, people and other um, conditions uh, in a given context. And we also like to highlight that agency is invited. It's something within the learner and then it's invite, and we need somehow create opportunity to invite language learners to um, exercise agency. And in the process of exercising agency, 
um, they also grow agency in the process. So, and it's also very important for, uh, for us to be aware that the agency is nurtured in relation with other, because we are talking about agency um, uh, as, an, uh, as it relates to um, a socially connected learner. Um, there are quite a few in, important considerations when we um, um, think, think about um, developing learner agency in teaching. And this is, seems to be an ideal uh, classroom. Um, I know that many classrooms are not like this one, and this is simply the kind of ideal classroom created by Oxford University Press. Uh, we need to think about um, the role of a context, um, uh, that um, how this, how, how, uh, how we can place agency in the curriculum or as a part of lesson objectives, whether um, in a given context, uh, um, in a given classroom, um, the kind of objective teaching um, include or address the issue of agency. And we need to think about um, whether the course content ha has something to do with agency or not, or um, has totally different kind of an orientation. Uh, we need to think about the roles of teachers and learners that they are constructed very differently in different contexts. Uh, we will I like to argue teachers play a very critical role in promoting agency. And we can also consider how we can incorporate um, agency into activities and fee um, feedback and assessment. Um, these uh, practices related to teaching. And as I said, I, we would like to argue that languages play a very important role in promoting and uh, developing learner agency because we are uh, talking about the mission or our commitment as language teachers to language teaching is not just about teaching um, language and um, teaching grammar, teaching vocabulary. We also need to think about how we can grow persons in the process and grow language learners in the process. So, um, but language teachers have, of course, have other um, pedagogical activity need to um, perform and like for instance, how they can maintain classroom interaction or how they engage language learners, how um, these, um, this idea of learning agency can be related to these uh, act pedagogical activities. And when we talk about uh, promoting or developing learner agency, we also need to think, think about the language learners um, because different language learners um, have different characteristics. Uh, we may need to adopt different kind of pedagogical prior, uh, practice. We also need to consider their prior experiences because um, some experiences may be very um, um, facilitative in, uh, can, can facilitate uh, our efforts to promote um, language learners agency, but other experiences that we need to invite them to critically engage with them, uh, which, uh, with these experiences uh, in, in our effort to um, promote uh, or develop their agency. Um, as I said, um, language teachers play a very critical role in promoting learner agency. There are quite a few um, things we can consider, but we're not really trying to um, promote a new set of practices. Um, and we are trying to um, invite teachers to reflect on their practice and discover uh, what kind of practice they've been doing um, uh, in relation to learner agency. In fact, some, most of the practices I'm gonna name here uh, will be something um, many of you are very familiar with. And, and then you can start thinking, well, um, these actually are good practices uh, with high learner agency potential. Um, um, if you want to develop uh, or you agree that uh, we should promote agency as uh, in our language teaching, you might need to think, think, think about how we, I can, how we can use these practices, the kind of things we used to do a bit, um, a, a lot more uh, in future practice. So for instance, we can invite students to set learning goals um, so that students can participate in deciding what they want to learn. Um, or we can invite students to generate learning content. We know um, with this um, um, pandemic, um, we rely uh, a lot on technology, internet to, uh, to, uh, to teach and learn. And uh, language learners actually have um, a lot of opportunities to create and generate uh, learning content um, by engaging with the kind of resources they can find in the internet. Uh, we can also think about learning-centered teaching. Now we talk about teacher-centered teaching, which we think it's bad. And then we talk about um, learner-centered teaching. Um, so we're trying to respond to learners' needs and uh, uh, learners' um, characteristics. So, but we now also need to think about uh, whether we can talk about learning-centered teaching. And so the teachers and language learners come to a consensus where they um, 
want to achieve in teaching and learning and that learning where they, the consensus becomes the kind of learning um, that um, both learn, language learners and teachers want to achieve and that uh, teaching should be centered on the kind of learning um, um, and that is agreed upon between language learners and teachers. Uh, we we uh, we we know that teachers do a plan uh, um, plan a lot before teaching, but uh, we also need to encourage teachers to um, um, be flexible and respond to emerging learning situations, so that they can seize the opportunities that to help learners to develop the kind of things um, they need to uh, develop, uh, rather than just follow a, a very strict plan. Uh, we can also encourage principal use of a language other than English. And I, I'm sure some of you may have heard about uh, translanguaging or translingual practice, um, where um, first language um, is not a front upon um, in English language classrooms, but is treated as um, something as resource, a uh, val val variable resource to help um, language learners and teachers to overcome um, particular challenges in the process uh, of learning and teaching. And we can try to create more open ended uh, activities so that um, 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 students can, um, well, different students can uh, uh, conclude their activities with different out uh, outcomes or um, products instead of imposing one uh, kind of a um, ex expectation, uh, expect outcome on all language learners in the same classrooms. So you can encourage different learners to come up with different outcomes um, um, with these open ended activities. Uh, we need to encourage students to form learning communities so they can uh, support each other. Uh, we know that peer support and peer learning um, plays quite an important role in um, making them feel that they have a good sense of control or, or ownership or, or um, in relation to learning. And we can, uh, well, language teachers and learners can explore answers together instead of uh, uh, teachers giving a learners answers um, to the questions um, teachers can ask questions that uh, that give them an opportunity to uh, explore answers together with learners. And we can also think about learner driven feedback and which is uh, uh, seems to be a new a little bit new notion because we talk about um, um, feedback as something um, in response to what the language learners prefer um, say um, to have. Uh, for instance, uh, language learners won't have particular kind of feedback and um, say they want you to give feedbacks on their spelling or they want to want you to give feedback on their pronunciation and you, um, you engage with a learner's preference, you could provide a kind of feedback um, and they would like to have uh, from you. So this is called learner driven feedback. So it's not just about uh, we using particular standard or criteria uh, and to give feedback to what students um, produce in, 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 in a, uh, in, in a task situation. We can also encourage students to teach. With, 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 this is called reciprocal uh, teaching. Um, um, when a la students feel that they can do much more than uh, what they um, um, uh, used to do in, in, in a learning situation, um, it empowers them. It gives them the strong feeling that uh, they, are, um, they ha can have a very uh, um, good control um, over their learning, they have a good sense of the ownership of the learning. And um, the, all these are uh, uh, teaching practices with high learner agency. Um, I'm sure some of you may have used them uh, in your teaching, but uh, others you, uh, you may find um, are quite new to you, but um, I encourage you to reflect on your own practices and, and to find out whether um, any of your practice could give uh, your language learners uh, um, a better sense of control over their learning and or uh, give them a split sense of ownership uh, in language learning as well. That kind of practice will be treated as uh, something that we should regard as, as uh, uh, something we should do more um, in teaching. Um, we, 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 anyway, uh, when we talk about teaching practice with a high learner agency, um, uh, we uh, inevitably, uh, well, we, we should um, uh, encourage students to reflect on their learning progress a bit more so they can have better idea of their, uh, what, what they are capable of doing and what they, can, they, what they need to do in, in the process. And while we encourage students to reflect on their learning progress, 
We should also motivate language teachers to reflect on their teaching practice a bit more as well. So that's to do, that's what we um, think learner agency is, uh, should be about. And that we know that um, um, learner agency is not something um, um, that taking place in, in a vacuum. Um, we know that um, learner agency is very much is a situated phenomenon. Uh, it, it unfolds or it develops it in, in a time and a place a particular place, context, and, and temporal uh, context at time. And so, well, we, we can conceptualize this kind of temporal and physical spatial context with a lot of uh, um, agents or uh, res uh, resources in it. And so we can think about, um, for instance, different stakeholders and, and for instance, students, teachers, um, uh, education policy makers, uh, you can, these these stakeholders may have different kind of beliefs and attitudes, and then they may have different kind of resources. Of course, in relation to Oxford University Press, they're talking about teaching materials, but teaching materials, um, we need to sort of um, um, understand in a very broad sense that it's to do with kind of resources uh, that can help us or help our language learners to learn and teach, for us to, uh, for us to teach. So when we talk about different stakeholders, we can, um, we we can um, think of like for instance policymakers. They do have very important uh, implications. Uh, well, they, their policies will have uh, very important implications for our practice within classroom. We can think of uh, school leaders uh, whose policies within schools will have uh, very important implications for our teaching and practice. And we also need to think about um, teacher educators who um, provide the kind of teacher education programs. Um, provide the kind of input that uh, uh, teachers uh, to teachers that before they are accredited for teaching. And we need to also think about parents, for instance, and um, parents play very important role in education process. Uh, we also, of course, need to think about students, language learners, and all these um, different stakeholders will have um, very important um, or profound influences on our teaching, or, or on the teaching that um, could take place within in a given context at a given time. There could be more than uh, these. Um, I think um, in some contexts, we also need to think about community leaders as well. Um, we also need to think about the kind of different uh, beliefs and attitudes um, being promoted uh, or circulate in a given context, given time. Uh, for instance, whether um, there are strong push for uh, the focus of um, um, growth mindset in teaching learning, whether there's um, people believe that all learners have the ability to learn or succeed, or um, sometimes we have this very strong deficit discourse. When we talk about language learners, we think that constantly think that language learners are um, someone who uh, can't do this, can't do that, and they need help from language teachers so that they can do this, can do that. So the kind of deficit discourse, or um, uh, whether um, all people believe that all agree um, to the fact, um, to the statement that all learners have the ability to learn and to succeed. And whether we have a mutually respectful relationship um, in a given classroom context, uh, where there um, say um, strong push for community building uh, among students or among uh, teachers. Um, we know that communities, uh, supportive communities will play a very important role in, in fostering um, or uh, agency of language learners and teachers. Um, whether there's a value, um, well, attached to outside school learning, because uh, we know uh, we talk about um, in class learning, we, we value uh, um, the kind of learning that takes place within school, but we don't, sometimes we don't think much about what is happening outside classroom, but we know that our language learners learn a lot outside classroom, and what we prepare them to learn uh, within classrooms also help them to deal with situations outside classrooms. So there's really need for us to synergize formal learning within class or school, uh, informal learning outside school, um, whether um, 
different stakeholders have this kind of shared value of outside school learning and its role in, in education process, that's also the very important uh, factor for us to consider uh, when we talk about um, ecology of learning agency. And we also need to develop a, com a set of common principles. Um, 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 for instance, we need to um, build positive collective agency for learners and teachers, and they need to somehow agree uh, to create a safe, a supportive environment. Uh, so uh, nobody uh, needs to be afraid of making mistakes um, in, in, in learning or in, in using the language, um, or there's uh, certain values that we share. Um, um, in relation to learning the language. Um, so that will uh, become kind of common principles that guide um, the operational exercise of a learning agency in the process. Uh, we also need to think about the resources we have, teaching materials. Uh, we know that teachers could act as the mediator between materials and learners. That, and there has been a lot of the studies, uh, research on, um, has have been a lot of studies on um, materials development, um, we need to recognize that teachers um, play a very important role uh, mediating between materials and learners. Um, they organize the activities based on the materials, so um, they can use materials to uh, promote a learner agency, or they can use uh, materials to create activities that actually turn out to be quite constraining. Uh, we also rec need to recognize that learners, um, they are active users for teaching materials, they don't really and just passively receive what we are um, trying to teach them. Um, they are also creators of materials, um, especially in in the last few years where a, a lot of learning and teaching uh, took place uh, online um, with help of technology. And um, we, uh, we know that um, teaching materials have been um, and transformed or changed a lot. Um, from the traditional kind of print text materials into something uh, what we um, call multi-model learning resources. They include a lot of uh, um, um, features like audio, video, or um, visual um, in them, uh, instead of uh, the traditional kind of a print text uh, materials that I used to have when I was a language learner myself. Um, and we also need to think about that uh, um, in teaching materials, there are activities that could we could um, we could use to promote and facilitate learning um, by inquiring. For instance, these activities will help um, or contribute to the growth of a student's agency in the process as well. Um, there's a quote from Paul Driver, um, one of the contributors to the position paper, where he had made has his comment on affordances. Um, a learner opportunity perceived by language learners. Um, he said a learner agency can be compared to chess, while a chess board provides a novice chess player exactly the same physical opportunities as it does uh, a grandmaster. A novice will not initially perceive many of the possible game moves. However, over time, the novice awareness of possible moves will gradually improve. This means it's very important for us to create these kind of opportunities um, to help uh, our language learners recognize that a resource is building within given co context um, and, and by helping them uh, become better and better recognizing and recognizing opportunities and resources within the context, we are helping them to become a masked uh, um, chess player, um, a masked um, language learner. A, a learner can, can um, uh, have a lot of resources within this mouse um, and come up with their own solutions in response to challenges they may encounter in the future. So we need to talk about promoting learner agency. Uh, we are aware uh, when we talk about learner, promoting learner agency uh, because learner agency is very situated phenomenon. Uh, we need to uh, be aware of the challenges that, um, that may go against our effort to promote learner agency. For instance, we may have all these different kinds of uh, and challenges uh, to do with cultural and social expectations that maybe um, with particular groups of learners, we have uh, particular kind of cultures of learning uh, where um, um, the kind of practice we, we want to use to promote a learning agency uh, may not be culturally compatible. Uh, they may mistake or they may um, um, perceive um, these practices wrongly. So we need to sort of, sort of find out 
the kind of practice that, that um, culturally appropriate uh, to, um, to promote learn agency in teaching. And of course, we need also to think about um, teachers. Um, teachers need to um, um, develop their confidence and um, capacity or practice in, in relation to the promotion of learn agency. I, although I said that uh, the kind of practice we encourage teachers to do are uh, not the kind of absolutely new uh, teaching practices. They are something um, that we have been doing a bit in the past. Uh, we just need to somehow recognize the value of these um, um, practices and um, do uh, a lot more because they, uh, these practices will help language learners to discover that they are um, um, uh, they, they, they can also have a better sense of ownership and have uh, control over learning, sense of control over learning. Um, so, but teachers do need support and, and we, they, uh, we know that teachers are very busy. Um, they don't have time and space. So in a sense, if we really need, um, we, we really think that uh, we should um, um, promote a uh, learner agency and treat, uh, regard learner agency as a pedagogical focus, uh, as policymakers and school principals need to create time and space for them to explore how that how this can be done um, in, in a culturally appropriate way in a given context. And we also need to be aware of the individual difference of language learners, age, for instance, the age, their experience, their knowledge English, their attitudes, they can may have different kind of values. And um, even uh, within the same class, we may have uh, learners of different readiness for learning. So these are, uh, are these these factors can be um, um, can make um, the, our effort to promote learning agency be challenging, and and of course we have these uh, contextual conditions, resources issues we need to consider, uh, whether we deal with large classrooms, whether we have rich access, uh, rich material resources available, or whether we need to deal with high stake tests. Um, in many contexts, we need to prepare students for the high stake tests so and um, this is something we need to consider uh, whether we could um, do something different from other teachers in other contexts when they we talk about promote learning agency uh, in teaching um, we believe there are possible solutions to these challenges because um, um, for instance when we talk about culture and social expectations we we can i mean there's something that um, if a language learning strongly um, um, uh, believing and uh, we can engage them uh, with some sort of a these popular beliefs and sort of discussion um, and trying to encourage them to see uh, whether they are alternative to what they believe in or what they are asking to believe in um, so they can see that some alternative in in the kind of a um, dominant cultural and social expectations uh, exams is important uh, exam results are important but um, but um, the way they spend the way they um, undertake um, um, may not be suitable um, to help them, um, well, may not be help them to get the kind of exam results they want to have. Um, they need to look for more effective ways um, of, um, say, um, getting good exam results. And we also need to think about how we can develop teachers more effectively, um, whether um, kind of seminars like um, one off seminar would be if effective means of professional development or whether we should uh, invest more resources in having teacher led inquiry groups or uh, in encourage um, teachers to undertake action research or even exploratory practice uh, so they can discover um, um, the best way or the best ways um, to promote learning agency uh, instead of imposing particular ideas. Um, we probably need to think about develop a tailor-made um, appropriate practice for different students. Um, and differentiation is definitely a very important uh, pedagogical, pedagogical strategy. And we also need to think about how we can um, respond to contextual conditions resources. Um, these are real constraints. Um, whether we can find a way to divide big class into smaller groups or use technologies to promote interaction. Um, this is something we can always um, explore together uh, rather by ourselves. Okay, I think um, I'm almost come almost come to the end of my talk, but I would like to conclude um, with my talk with four important messages. Um, the first message I want to um, um, 
highlight uh, here is that learner with a sense of their own agency are more likely to be engaged, invested um, in their language. So there's great value if we try to promote agency uh, in language uh, in language teaching among our language learners, because we will be rewarded by language learners um, who are likely to be more engaged, investing their language learning um, within the classroom, beyond the classroom. So this is a very important message for language teachers to be aware. And we're not wasting our time where we um, invest efforts in promoting agency. We actually will be rewarded by the kind of learners that um, that will be highly engaged and highly invested in language learning. And it's very important for us to remember the second message is for teachers who, who teachers who are concerned at their role in the process. And they may be think that, well, maybe thinking they'll I'll, I'll, I'll lose my teaching job if I um, in, invest um, efforts in promoting learning agency. Um, it's very important for us to remember that teachers play as an essential role in facilitating the development of learner agency by providing opportunity for students to exercise enhance their agency so we do still have a very important role to play um we as i said i'm one of the most important missions um for language teachers is to grow learners grow individuals um apart from we teach the kind of uh, traditional um language items like vocabulary uh, grammar or speaking skills or reading skills kind of thing in, in, in language teaching. We also play a very important role in growing persons or growing individuals or growing learners in our language classroom. And the third message is to do um, um, with people outside classroom. Um, agency does not reside solely in the learner, but it's negotiated and supported by all stakeholders in their college. So, uh, it's not just about language teachers, it's also about school principals, it's also about um, parents, it's also about policy makers, uh, curriculum developers, uh, or material developers. Um, we all play a very sort of a important role or supportive role um, in helping language teachers to promote learning agency in teaching. So it's not, and it's also important for us to remember that um, although it, um, we talk about learning agency, it's it's also to do with different stakeholders, uh, many of our teacher educators included, included um, and policymakers and school principals uh, in a given uh, ecology or given context. And finally, um, students who develop agency are prepared not only for success as a language learners, but also for the challenges opportunity in life beyond the classroom, in the present and the future. I believe that's the, um, the kind of outcome that we want to pursue, uh, we want to realize uh, through education, because we really need to think that we are not only teach language, we also develop the kind of individuals um, that are well prepared for the challenges and opportunities in life beyond the classroom, in the present and the future. Okay, many thanks for your attention. I think I'm done. Um, maybe I should... Uh, if, if there's any questions, I can answer the questions. I'm, I post share. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Ga, uh, for your uh, lively presentation. Uh, we really uh, are very thankful uh, for your uh, valuable uh, time and then knowledge that you have shared with us. Uh, thank you for this, your effort that you have made for to make this conference successful also. Thank you very much for this. So I'd like to request the participant, if you have any queries regarding this session, please, uh, you can post on the chat box so that we can uh, discuss for uh, your queries for the few winners. If you have any queries, please. Uh, MS? Am I still, uh, I need to stop sharing. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, it looks like <laughs> nobody has questions. So. Yeah, I don't think that anybody has questions. Yeah, which is good. And yeah. are people all waiting for the next speakers. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah.
Uh, okay, uh, thank you once again, uh, Professor Gao, for your uh, nice presentation, yep. and then for the third provoking pro uh, the presentation on the uh, on uh, the language uh, the, the students agency or the in uh, the language learning classroom. Thank you for this, and then uh, I'd like to hand over this uh, what floor to uh, the Rajan sir. Please over to you uh, for uh, the remaining sessions. Thank you uh, uh, for. Uh, so there's a question there. Uh, why most of uh, we teachers are not successful? Why most of the teachers are not so successful to implement such a innovating ideas in your uh, in our uh, teaching learning process? No, we are not saying a teachers not successful, and that's I think that's uh, no, I said that's uh, not not what we're trying to say. Um, I think what we need to do is to kind of go through what we have been doing and try to reflect on um, the kind of um, practices that we have uh, undertaken and identify the good practice. And usually the book practice is a, a, a practice with high learning agency as well. So uh, we shouldn't feel bad about that we are not doing enough, and, but we need to just to discover the kind of the resources within uh, ourselves and, and then and try to do the kind of good things um, that we used to a bit more in the future. Uh, thank you yep. uh, uh, very much. So uh, please, if you have any uh, more queries, please, you can post there. Otherwise, uh, we could proceed for the next session, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Nagi, sir, you are muted, I think. Uh, are you going to say anything? Are you speaking something? Okay. Rajan, sir, over to you, please. Okay. I now this is my it's over. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh thank you, Gambir, sir. And thank you, presenter, Gal. So we are really very thankful to find you as with, with us uh <clears throat> of course the ideas that basically are really thought-provoking and are very useful for teacher professional development as well as uh, bringing some changes in teaching learning environment so meanwhile we have uh, the other presentation in a shortly a while and i guess we have a presenter with us, uh, Alistair Pennycook. Uh, we have uh, him uh, with us now. And I'd like to request uh, Gum, oh, sorry, uh, Dian Joshi, sir. I guess Dian Joshi, sir, is with us. So for chairing the, the next session we have, uh, uh, are we have, I mean, do I have Dian, sir, with us? Uh, so we'll be shortly beginning with that. Actually, we are uh, we are we have expected the ten minutes discussion so that we could begin right <coughs> the another presentation by ten minutes. Meanwhile, if there is any sharing by anyone, all right, we can have that sharing. We can take it and we can move forward for that. And uh, before we start the next presentation, so we can take a couple of ideas uh if they are like uh krishna sir says i hope we should consider learner agency regarding teaching learning thank you for your wonderful presentation so yeah for sure like uh when we talk about learner agency and i i i felt like i did i i i'm sharing on uh teachers well-being and to uh, to some extent this well-being also associated with the agencies like uh, for bringing some of the uh, better teaching and learning scenarios around. So yes, of course we can have, and if, if others insights, we can uh, come up with that and have discussions on that. All right, so uh, we'll be shortly uh, beginning our next presentation. So in a while, so we'll be waiting for a couple of uh, 
more participants will be going to start in 10 minutes so and along with that uh, we have uh, we are Jasmine? waiting for Jasmine yes. has a, I think Jasmine has what is this? Jasmine Yeah I'm just checking the chat box. Oh yeah yeah thank uh, yes uh, so Jasmine says uh, in my teaching I find that the students are authentic when they see practical benefits it seems that they usually do not take much agency for learning, but for exams. Uh, so, Gao, do, uh, <laughs> Professor Gao, do you have anything to share? Oh, on that, uh, that's a na natural thing, right? They can, <laughs> they, they um, but that's why I think we need some engaged language learners with some sort of discussion or reflection on what motivates them. I mean, if exam motivates them, we, sh as teachers, should, I mean, also somehow uh, address their concerns in a teaching and uh, if if um language learners see that uh, our teaching is so different from what they actually need and then they will be uh, less invested in, in in the learning process or opportunity to provide provided by you um if they see that there's some sort of um um synergy between your teaching and what they want to achieve in learning and then they will become much more. Um, so yes, I mean, um, if uh, students are uh, motivated to achieve better exam results, and um, um, acknowledge this is a valid and um, very important concern, and then you based on that the kind of trust that you have and the shared values you have with them, then you can start encouraging them to explore uh, what beyond examination. Because we, I mean, at the end of the day. It's, let me tell you about my driving license test. I mean, I, I went to a very good driving school, extremely good at um, passing all its, um, uh, wow, what is that, um, participants um, in terms of uh, tests. But after I passed my driving test, I couldn't drive. That's, that's they're so good um, at helping um, um, participants to pass the, um, course participants to pass the driving test but uh, still without the kind of capability or um, enough uh, uh, skill in driving so that's the same thing we need to, need to encourage students to think about you pass the same but what is uh, what what beyond the exams so then i need to think about oh i need english to do this i need english to do that and then you will Professor, find something you will, yeah yeah uh, yeah, I'm Jasmine. Thank you very much yeah. uh, for answering that question. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, your example actually shows that you want to get the um, that license, but then you uh, did not put it to use. Yeah. yeah I think students uh, sometimes also invest, uh, whether they invest or yeah. not, um, depends on whether they see the return. Yeah. Yeah. If they find that, yeah, long term, even long term, um, they don't see that, um, for example, English um, plays any role. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I, I did a study about um, cooperative learning in uh, group writing. So, yeah, uh, yeah um, it's very hard to actually um, push this among uh, the, yeah, the participants uh, were Chinese students. So, yeah, the study actually found that um, um, they, yeah, some of the students are from archaeological major, for example, archaeology. Uh -huh. They yeah, learn, yeah, they learn that they don't really find any relevance of English um, to their current study, either to their current study or to their long term on um, yeah, like career. That's um, why they did not show much agency. Um, yeah, I know they call it uh, archaeology is a tricky thing because that uh, this is with history, right? So. Um, but if you, if you, have, I mean, for instance, like this, this some Chinese archaeologists discovered that uh, the kind of uh, fossils in in Yunnan, or um, and then and then to publish that um, the relevant studies in Nature and Science or something like that, and that would be <laughs> quite a very practical use of the archaeology knowledge and expertise, and together with the English language expertise, I think. And so uh, that um, yes, I mean, passing the exams um, for them. Uh, is probably the only concern, um, but uh, if you somehow can see, help them to see uh, the relevance of English beyond the passing exams, um, then that would be great. Um, 
obviously not all of them will have uh, opportunities to use English after graduation. And that's actually uh, something we need to be really critical about it is that um, whether they really need to learn, spend so much time learning English or whether it's just better for some of them um, to spend more time and uh, on learning English so they can where uh, they, there's clear relevance of use English to their future careers uh, or life opportunities. Um, but th this is a very difficult question to answer because I mean, um, if they don't learn English, then uh, they will never have that kind of chance. But if they learn English, they may have the kind of chance. So, <laughs> so I also know that uh, they probably need to do that because they need to um, graduate with a particular um, certain kind of English exam results. Yeah, great. Uh, thank, thank you. you uh, thank you, Gao, and thank yeah. you, Justin, yeah. for your time. Uh, so.